Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The market is booming and prices are flying, and especially on some of these Path to Glory cards, those investments are looking insane as prices just continue to rise on those cards. But what I want to talk about today on the market is why is this market going up as much as it is, and when do we need to be looking to sell if... We need to be worried about that in the next couple of days. We have a loading screen to talk about with the next upcoming promo confirmed for Friday. And I want to talk about content today on Wednesday. And especially as you're watching these Path to Glory cards, when it might be a decent time to sell some of them, uh, especially as they've had these really big spikes once again. It almost feels like two weeks ago, right? When we had the huge, insane spike on PTG cards. But of course, with games coming up every single day and it being crunch time for upgrades on these cards, there's a lot of fine lines of when to sell, when to buy, live trading with them. So we're going to talk through that a little bit more today because these are the most hyped cards in the market right now. So if you're excited for the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's get right into it and talk about these PTGs and talk about, again, why prices are going up like crazy. Well, yesterday's content was a bit of a slow day. We had the two uh, SBCs dropped, Kovacic and Trossard, as showdowns, right? Not bad content. Kovacic got a pretty solid upgrade um, on his card. Of course, you look at this and you think, man, with the plus two, if they end up winning this game, this card could be pretty fantastic. And I think I agree with that. I kind of hope that he does get the upgrade because that'll be a really, really nice card uh, in the game. Trossard also with an upgrade would look really good. I know these guys have some downvotes on footbin, but 65, 70K for these, not bad. 82, 84, 83, 84 for those guys, not bad. But other than that, we had a kid SBC and content yesterday was Quiet. So again, what happens to the market? Well, people go out and they buy cards to either try for their teams or especially with these Path to Glories, people just go out and buy because there's nothing else to do except for buy live cards that could potentially rise up in price, right? Case in point is Thomas Delaney. I mean, this guy yesterday literally went from 22,000 coins all the way up to where he is now at like 30, 31,000 coins. And it's all because people are investing on the hype of the upgrade just because these are live cards that are out of packs. And of course, Denmark plays today, right? Denmark is one of the nations that is playing today. You can see the price rise here, 24K up to 32,000 coins. And that is the story for so many cards that are out uh, of the PTG teams right now. Even cards that are not expected to do that well and maybe not even win or progress in the tournament are getting invested in just because of the potential that they could, right? Araujo, 170K going up more since yesterday. Zakaria, 257. I mean, even some of the discard guys like we just looked at with the Delaney going up from 22K to 30 uh, plus thousand coins. All of these cards are rising. Buffal is up. Um, there's another really like cheap card. Aldasari is starting to rise, right? 31,000 coins for him. And even your big ticket cards like Goretzka was 700K two days ago. Now he's 1.1 million coins after a Germany result. And of course, Costa Rica um, beating Japan. And then, you know, the, the live card aspect kicking in there. So with the games that are coming in today, this is the stuff I want you guys to be very careful with. I know a lot of you guys have invested in all sorts of these cards. I want to talk about the French cards and I want to talk about the Argentinian cards specifically. I just showed you the Couture Romero card, right? Um, and the Papu Gomez. These guys are ones that are up so much. And yes, they are expected to win today. They are favorites against Poland. And if they do win, will they go higher? Potentially afterwards. But one thing that we have noticed with these cards is the, the teams that are favorites, the nations that are favorites, their card prices actually tend to drop off after a game. Case in point is Frankie de Jong. His card was 570,000 coins before the game started uh, yesterday against Qatar, right? They ended up winning 2-0 and his card went from 570k down to 540 and is now back up at 570. They were expected to win, so his card price didn't really move that much. I think it might be a little bit of the same with a guy like Kuti Romero and Alejandro Gomez. And also thinking about how many people have invested in specifically the Romero card, I would be somebody that if I invested in this card on the weekend, which uh, I did buy a couple and I sold them earlier, uh, like 100 and I think I sold it at 150 and now he's 170. I would be in the camp where I would take the safe profits. If you're in an investment, especially if you have a lot of cards, especially on a lower tier like this this Romero card. I mean, think about all the other Prem center backs that are in the game that are a little bit better than this card. You think about Ben White, it's in the current promo team. The hype with this Romero card 
is with the upgrade potential, right? And the potential for the potential for it to continue to get upgraded. How do I search for search for white on the market? There it is, Benjamin. You gotta go full name. But this card is 90,000 coins, which is basically half the price, almost half the price, not quite, and definitely better than the Romero card. Uh, it's just not live, right? That's why the Romero card is so expensive, and we have more Prem center backs coming in the next promo as well. So for those cards, selling into the hype is your best best choice and your best option especially for the guys that are playing today i know that denmark are favored against australia to go through i completely understand that could thomas delaney go up to like 50k absolutely he could if uh they i mean imagine this card with a plus one upgrade right it, it would probably rise up in price even further if they were to win the game today um against australia but even with some of the other ones like uh, you know, the Polish uh, Milik, right? They're big underdogs. So you might want to sell that card in the hype today. That's just the safe route. And you guys know this. We've talked about it a lot. But when the market like this is super duper invested in, I really think it's extra crucial to sell in the hype on the, kind of those super duper gamble cards, right? Now, if you bought somebody like Griezmann from the beginning, yeah, Griezmann and France, they're expected to win, right? They're expected to win on the early slate today against Tunisia. They're already through, right? There's no more upgrade coming for him. That's already locked in. He actually already has got the upgrade, right? So a card like that, if you bought it at like 450K early on, you're not looking to sell that card today. It's more of the gamble type cards that you are wanting to get out and be safe with just in case their cards drop off like crazy and um, after a team loses or does not make it on in the next round today then that's uh going to be a problem for a lot of these cards so that's one thing i'd be very very careful with on this market now i want to take a look at koulibaly because this is something that we saw yesterday and for these teams that are on the line, we're going to use Delaney as an example again here in just a second. This Koulibaly Path of Glory card is right now 415,000 coins. He was 320k at the beginning of the day yesterday. When Senegal scored their first goal to go up 1-0, I'm pretty sure Koulibaly went from 340k to 400k plus. And then when Ecuador equalized... He went back to 350k for a quick second, and then of course he scored the second goal to put Senegal ahead, and then he went back to 420k where he is now. Watch out for these cards live in game. Since the upgrades for a lot of these teams where their fate of moving on in the tournament rests in the balance of a game or a result in these next couple of days, watch these sorts of cards. So like Delaney, I'd be watching that card today. Um, in the later stages, I'd definitely be watching Aldasari. I'd definitely be watching... Uh, Chucky Lozano, because these are types of cards where their result and whatever happens in the game today, and even in the next couple days, if you look at some of these other cards, is make or break for the live aspect of this card, whether it upgrades or whether it doesn't. Trading with these cards live is going to be absolutely nuts. All I will say is this sell a couple minutes after that goal is scored when you see the price rise up that is like the peak sell time 95 percent of the time with these cards and it's the safest sell time too when everybody's rushing to the market to buy the card let's say like let's say saudi arabia go up 1-0 today on mexico this aldasari might shoot up to like 40k you know you might want to sell right just to be safe yes could it go up maybe higher as they if they move out on into the knockouts and keep progressing yes but we like to save profits, right? And that's going to get you more profit in the long term, nine times out of 10, than gambling on it and waiting for a certain result to happen inside of a game. So it's just risky, right? So taking the safe profits is there, but watch out for those cards and trading with those in a live aspect. Now, we've talked a lot about PTGs. I know they're the most hyped cards in the game right now, even more hyped than the promo cards that are in packs, to be completely honest. Um, but I want to talk about best of team of the week as well, because I don't know how I completely missed this. And I, I didn't even mention it in yesterday's video, but best of team of the week is now out of packs. And these cards just keep rising. Tomori is 260. Along with the rest of the market, uh, these informs, as they got super low in price over the past couple of days, being in packs over the weekend, they are now out of packs. And with the market rising, these guys are following suit. So if you bought any of these cards early in the week, just like we did with the rest of the market, saying it was a really, really solid time to buy on like Sunday night, Monday morning time frame. These guys are exploding. But I wanted to kind of give you guys some backdrop and some information on why they're going up so much. It's because they're out of packs and these guys are still some really, really popular cards that are in the game. So that's kind of the reasoning that's happening there. You know, there are a lot of people that have in, that are invested in these um, and it's going to take some sort of like SBC panic or a pack code or maybe a loading screen with something crazy about this upcoming promo to make this 
type of card drop on the market. Like I really feel like the market's going to be in a pretty safe place for the next couple of days. Um, so I don't think there's really a reason to panic too much or to feel like you have to sell seeing that your investments are up so much. Kind of sell when you're happy with the profit type of thing over the next couple of days on a lot of different cards. Um, just because I feel like we're in a really, really steady market at the moment. I mean, you take a look at even a uh, World Cup hero, Captavia, who got a price range update because uh, he was going extinct at 400K. He was above 450, I think, for a quick moment yesterday. Now above 400,000 coins in holding. Uh, you look at some of these icons. Butrogueno is 1.1. Um, Forlan is back up. Donovan is up. Mori, um, not, Morientes is priced. And you look at the Messi SBC cost, 500K to do Messi. That tells you about fodder right now, right? Literally just everything is up, right? 84s, 5K, 85s are above 10, 86s are 17. Everything just keeps trickling upwards because like we said at the beginning, the content is just a little bit average, but there's still a lot to do with people crafting SVCs, getting their swaps done, EA um, changing up the whole the whole um, golden goal scenario again, only 60 games every 24 hours, which I think for most people actually is better than 10 games every hour and then resetting it. So GG's to EA for that. I opened some of my 84 times 20s yesterday. I packed Suarez, I packed Ronaldo, um, and I got a lot of good fodder and I'm working on Messi right now. I'm actually going to submit Messi here in a little bit and finish off that SBC. Um, but that's what, what I just did yesterday and, and tonight on this game grinding for the 84 times 20 times three, and then doing SBCs with that fodder is what a lot of people are doing. So when you have to go buy an extra 85 or an 86 or an 87 to finish the team, that's going to keep fodder going up. So until we get supply, right? Until we get supply, I do expect to see the market continue to go up on the fodder side of things. Although it might start to reach a peak probably today or tomorrow. It even went up further yesterday on Tuesday um, and into today. But I think that before we get to Friday, we'll probably see a peak and then a bit of a drop off on the weekend. Let's talk today on Wednesday, right? What kind of content can we get today? Could anything be released to shake it up? I mean, we do have a possibility, I think, for another one of these like pack challenges um, and you know, we had Tunisia. I don't know what nation would be next, but I think we get, we could get something there. And then I do believe there is a leaked, um, SBC that I think is going to drop today. It's nothing super insane for most people, but I do believe the Walker Zimmerman, um, road to the world cup card is going to be dropped in the game today. Just makes sense. The flashback David Silva is ending. So EA removing one SBC and then another one coming in just makes sense. So watch out for that SBC today. If you're a US NNT fan, and then of course, we have this loading screen and a part of today's content as well. I would expect to see a loading screen update for the World Cup stories promo. Now we knew this was coming because of EA schedule. And it was funny yesterday when EA dropped this loading screen, it said starts in nine days. They had the timer wrong. Um, but that is now confirmed to be our promo. I don't know why EA is starting off with these loading screens like three days ahead of time now they're giving us plenty of time to know what promo is next now we already had the leaks coming out and we do have a couple more leaked players to look at the leaks are kind of like slowly trickling out right we have a player or two a day we got two more yesterday Leroy Zane stats expected another another pretty big card right we have Rashford we have Van Dyke we have Zane and uh now we actually have Laporte as well so Sané and Laporte were the added cards uh, that are leaked. So very interesting to see. It doesn't really feel like this promo has anything special to it. And we'll deep dive into it uh, as we learn more. Hopefully today on Wednesday, we get a loading screen with a bit more detail. Um, I mean, this is a cool card because it makes a usually unusable center back really usable with a nice pace boost. So I'm a fan of that Laporte. That's a cool card there. Um, and, you know, Sonny looks cool too. Hopefully a weak foot upgrade. But I'm just interested to see what the promo aspect is or is it just going to be another promo, kind of like the Road to the World Cup cards are right now, where the ones that we have in packs, these purple ones, where it just seems like it's it's cool, right? Yeah, it's a promo, and we have live, or not live, but we have special cards in the game uh, that are nice upgrades and stuff, but it doesn't seem as hype, honestly, as even the Path to Glory cards are, because these guys don't upgrade or anything like that. So um, we'll have to see what the premise of the next upcoming promo is, and hopefully we learn about that a little bit today with a loading screen, so I'd watch out that for that today as well. And then the last thing I'd maybe watch out for is that 81 plus team of the week returning. There's not a lot of SBCs that are expiring today, but I just feel like EA wants to make those 81 plus team of the week packs a mainstay this year on the game because they can continuously supply that um, team of the week fodder into people's accounts. And right now, we don't have team of the weeks dropping every single Wednesday because during the World Cup, those are paused. So 
yeah, I just we're going to have to see how that ends up playing out and how that ends up happening. So again, I'm not trying to take too much of your time today with the video because I know uh, that there's not a ton going on in this game. It's just a good time to grind, right? Catch up on objectives, catch up on getting some gameplay in, qualifying for weekend league, getting your rivals win, stuff like that. And if you're trying to trade, once again, just look for the flips. Look for the rare cards. I bought an Abamyang in the low 320, 320 flat, I believe. I didn't make too much there, right? It's kind of like slim margins right now on this market, but you can absolutely make trades and, and buy and sell cards. I bought this Rooney at 403, so I made a couple K there. I bought this Sonaldo at 616. Just watch the fluctuations. Icons are really good to trade with. Um, your out-of-pack special cards that fluctuate a decent amount are really good to trade with as well. Just learn some prices. These brand new World Cup icons are good to trade with um, as people are trying out new cards and having fun, right? That's why I'm watching the Busquets. I know they're in packs, so they could be impacted by supply, specifically these Road to the World Cup cards, but I would really keep an eye on these, like Mane at 529. I'm, if I see Mane at like 515, you know, I'm probably going to snag that. If I see this Sonaldo go at like 620, I'm going to snag that because I know that I can flip it for a little bit higher later on. So just kind of like trend trading and doing that sort of trading methods right now while the market is high, um, people aren't scared to buy. So it is very, very nice uh, to have that opportunity there. Now, I want to say this really quick as well. I have picked up a couple of Christian Pulisic uh, because I do think that there's potential for his price to rise up. I don't like his movement too much post-game because he went down post-game and he really hasn't moved. Uh, he's been right around the mid-80s. I picked him up at like 84K. Looks like he's starting to get a little bit more rare now, but I don't think these cards are getting upgraded every single day for the performances that happened the day before. I think that EA is updating them at the end of the match day. So I don't believe that the next upgrade for these is going to happen until Friday night or early Saturday morning after all of the third group stage games are played by every single team. I think that might be our next round of the ones to watch and PTG upgrades. So a little bit of a wait time from now until then, but it's only a couple of days and there's a lot of action to come in the next couple of days with the World Cup games that are going on as well. So that's going to be the video for me today, guys, to be completely honest. Keep trading out there. Keep grinding. Have fun. Uh, there is a lot to do. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm semi-happy that EA are giving us kind of a little bit of a time to breathe, a bit of the time for the market to breathe at the moment, to work on objectives, to work on SBCs, and uh, to continue to get things done before we have a promo Friday that gets kind of focused on packs and new cards and all the craziness once again. So that's the video for today, boys. If you did enjoy, smash the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate for the Count, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.